Hello. Just recently, I finished reading a brand new novel which I think is so tremendous. It's incredibly moving and the, the story is so thrilling and it contains so many ideas that it's really had me mulling over and thinking about it and wanting to discuss it with people. So I'm hoping this might urge you to uh, read it. Uh, and if you have read it, uh, please let me know in the comments below and we can have a discussion about it because there is so much to say uh, about this wonderful book. So a few years ago, I read uh, the novel Mrs. Engels by Gavin McRae. And this is one of the most brilliant books that I think I've read in the past decade. It's a historical novel uh, that focuses on the life of Lizzie Burns, who was a real life historical figure that was the long term partner of Frederick Engels, the philosopher and theorist and one of the founders of Marxism. And by telling her story and, and fictionally reinventing uh, her life, we get this intimate view of this philosophical concept, which has been so central to the, the past century of uh, the world, uh, but also just tells uh, such a stunningly beautiful story. So I loved this book and I've been so eager eagerly awaiting the, the follow-up novel um, that will come from this. And it is finally coming out. And it is called The Sisters Mao. And it's a much bigger, um, much chunkier in some ways, a much more ambitious uh, novel than uh, Mrs. Engels in that it has quite a complicated story. And it doesn't exactly follow from uh, any characters or events um, from Mrs. Engels, but it very much follows on from that, that first novel in that it follows the implications and effects of Marxism in the, the last century and looks at the, the midpoint of the 20th century and, uh, and some of the, the effects through it through two very different stories. But what I think this novel is centrally uh, about about is the way that uh, the performances from the different female characters in it reveal deeper truths about both the wider society and the, the stories in the hearts of these women and these characters at the center of this novel. So I'm going to try to describe the, the plot as, as best I can because it is, is quite complicated. Um, so we have the lives of Iris and Ava in the year 1968 in London. And they are the central members of this radical performance collective uh, that inhabits the this theater in the city and uh, Iris sort of at first it, it um, follows their their stories um, separately so Iris is sort of eking out a living by selling drugs at uh, these counterculture parties and uh, and helping to support their theater collective um, through these these sales and Ava uh, meanwhile takes a number of performers from the collective down to Paris because in that year, in 1968, there were uh, big revolts and protests in Paris and across France uh, against capitalism and consumerism and uh, the, the traditional uh, modes of, of power that were in place. And uh, so they were enjoining in, in that and you get this uh, perspective of that, that uh, this, this great upheaval during that time and how there was a lot of excitement and discussion and, and theorizing all going on at that time. And, uh, and then they come back together in London and they find that they have to try to save their, their theater. It it's, um, might be taken away from them because it is being um, condemned because it's a, it's a very rundown establishment. It's, um, it's being used as a squat by a lot of drifters that are passing through as well as people that belong to this collective and uh, and also their mother who owns the establishment wants to take back control of it. So they come up with this shockingly disruptive plan uh, to both confront their mother and to try to make a statement to save their collective and their theater. And uh, so there, there's that side of the story. Um, but then on the other side of the story, there is Jane, um, who was a real life 
historical woman that was also known as Madame Mao, as she was one of the wives of Chairman Mao. And uh, she is a former performer herself. And uh, when we follow her story, the year is 1974, and she has taken over directing a ballet performance that is being staged during a state visit for Imelda Marcos, the, the first lady of the Philippines, um, who's a very notorious figure. I'm still live at the, the moment. And, uh, and so, yeah, it records that um, the buildup to that meeting between these two women who were the wives of uh, men in power. And, uh, and we follow uh, Jane's life and her interactions with her daughter. And these um, two stories um, between in different times periods and between London and China, they cross over in their themes in um, quite surprising ways and that are like gradually revealed over the course of the story as it travels back and forth between uh, their two different stories. And uh, so, so yeah, it's quite an intricate plot. And the way this novel is structured is quite intricate. It's, it's sort of structured like a dramatic performance with an opening and a closing. And instead of an intermission, there is an interruption in the middle of the novel, which goes back in time for the sisters in London, and in some cases leaps forward in the, the case of Jane into a, a later time in the 90s when she's writing a letter um, to her husband. And the threads of these stories weave together in an intriguing and thrilling way and I thought it was so compelling what the these stories say about mother-daughter relationships and how power and uh, these dominant ideologies can really twist the the motivations of people and subvert their their natural instincts of, of how they interact with each other to to force these sort of artificial situations and um, um, which in in these stories um, have very dramatic uh, consequences um, because of the the tensions it, it, it creates and arises um, in these relationships so in one sense, this novel tells deeply personal and intimate stories that I became so involved in and I just got swept up in this historical narrative, this, this grand sweeping historical narrative. But at the same time, I think it asks a lot of compelling questions which are surprisingly uh, relevant and contemporary to our times. Questions about how our ideals play out in reality. You know, we can have these big ideas and form these, these grand ideologies about how society should work and how we should relate to each other. But how does that actually work in reality is, is a much tougher question. And this, expo this story explores some of those possibilities. But also it asks questions about what are the visible and invisible power structures that are working behind large larger events and the, the figureheads uh, which we, we see are, are steering our society. Uh, so in, in this case of, of Madame Mao, um, what is she doing behind the scenes and how is she using her, her power in different ways and what are her aims and motives? And the, the same goes with the, the two sisters in London that are performing and trying to create these artworks to provoke discussion discussion and to, re to reveal deeper um, honesty about what is happening in, in society and, and trying to tear down some of the, the structures are at, that are work behind us, which we don't even realize are, are there and which are sort of steering our motives, like with capitalism and money and how this can so often steer our actions because we, we have to be motivated to um, try to, to earn money in order to survive. And how does this this play with our um, with our expectations and and the expressions of our desires and what we want and and so it's asking these larger questions about 
how do we live an honest life? I think um, that's really what's at the, the center of this book. How do we live an honest life in a larger society? How do we live an honest life in our intimate relationships with our loved ones and amongst our family? And how do we live honestly with ourselves? How do we be honest with what we truly want and desire in life? And that is something really difficult to confront. And uh, and so I think some of the the radical actions and theatrical performances in this story are are trying to tear down some of these illusions to to reveal what people what these characters honestly want in their lives and um, and through these these very dramatic actions there there's um, some uh, yeah really surprising things that happen in this story it um, it shows that and uh, and I think it's so extraordinary how it does that and I've always been interested in the history of performance art and collectives especially um, in the the 60s when a lot of progressive movements were taking place and uh, uh, some of these artistic collectives were expressing um, some really radical ideas uh, at the the time and and presenting them in a very different way. And I think a lot of these have been forgotten. And so I love the way that this novel brings some of that back to life and really states how even though a lot of these performances and art pieces have been forgotten, it sort of triumphs over history in a very poignant way. And uh, one of the, the characters states that at one point in the novel that society doesn't need perfect art. It just needs people who try to make art of any kind, good or bad. People who are willing to fail. That's what helps societies grow and what in the end brings about change. And I think that statement says something much bigger about what are what value our actions have, um, what our contribution is to the world and society and to the people around us in order to try to enact change and work for the, the greater good. This novel is so entertaining. It is such a joy to read and it's so complex, I think, in what it's revealing about the, the hidden drama that is at the center of both our lives and in larger society. And I really appreciate how Gavin is focusing on the female perspectives of these different historical periods. And he said when he first published Mrs. Engels that he wanted this to be the first book in a trilogy about revolutionary wives. And, uh, and so now we have the second installment of this trilogy. And and I hope he continues writing it because uh, it, it makes me think about how back in 2017 there was this this popular picture that came out and was being circulated from a NATO conference um, from that time where there was photographs the um, spouses and partners of a, a number of the, the central leaders that were at this NATO conference and uh, the majority of them that were women but one of them was the husband of the first openly gay prime minister of Luxembourg. And uh, and so the, the sort of incongruity of a man amongst all of these wives um, made people share it a lot. And I loved this photograph because it, it made me think about how like I never want to be a politician. I never want to be married to a politician. But if I was married to a politician, I would want to be sat with the wives of all of these men in power power because I think they are really the ones that know what is going on behind the, the scenes of uh, the, their particular countries and behind like the wider world. And uh, so, you know, that's the table you'd want to be sat at. And I think that's what Gavin is giving us with these, these stories. It's a much more intimate and personal story. And so it's revealing the hidden drama behind these big societal movements from history. And I think I think that is so fascinating and beautifully done and uh, and since honesty is such a central theme of this novel like I need to be 
honest uh, myself, um, which I'm a bit trepidatious to, to do, but I, I can't pretend that my feelings uh, about this novel are totally objective and um, because I, I have a personal relationship with, with Gavin. And sometimes it was challenging for me to read this novel uh, personally uh, because I could see so much of Gavin on the page. Even though this is fiction and these are characters, there were some lines lines that I, I just found so much to be like Gavin's voice. At one point, a character says, truth is always the best option because it's the radical option because it's true. And that is that is Gavin there on the page. And, and I, I have very seldom read books where I feel like I could sense the sensibility of the author so strongly behind the words. I mean, I think this happens a lot of the time when we read books and we can feel the author, the person behind, you know, this fictional creation that, that they've made. And uh, and I, I found that reading Mrs. Engels and then I actually got to know Gavin himself and we had this very powerful, intimate relationship with each other. And sadly, we, we can't be a part of each other's lives anymore even though I still love him. But like I think back to moments when like once I visited him at the hospital when he was undergoing a procedure and I was holding his hand and I felt this connection between us which was so beautiful and meaningful and I uh, and I can I can feel that still and so when reading parts of this novel you know it was like I was still there with his hand in mine and uh, so so yeah it was it was a very powerful experience reading this book for me personally but I think outside of that, I can still appreciate the, the art and the power of this book. And I, I hope it goes on to have a lot of success and to win awards. I know Gavin wants to, to win the Booker, so I hope it goes on and wins the Booker Prize this year. Although it's not being actually published in the UK until later this year. It's not coming out until September. And so I, uh, a lot of people will have to wait to read it. But I, I I hope you'll anticipate reading this and pre-order it and, and look forward to, to reading it um, if you haven't already because it is such a, a special book and it's such a tremendous story uh, that, that moved me greatly and I know it's going to stay with me for a long time. So uh, thank you for watching. I, I hope you're reading good things and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.